Good morning and welcome to our midweek reflection from Tombridge Parish Church. It's good to be with you to share this short time and uh, let's get straight down to prayer. O Lord our God, your servant David wrote, My times are in your hands. Grant that our short time together may be in your hands and so be transformed into something of eternal worth. For the glory of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. A collect of the fourth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may, may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 1 to 14. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality or of any other kind of purity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. As we uh, read these verses in Ephesians chapter 5, we, we can't help being drawn to the rogues gallery of inappropriate behaviours in verses 3 to 5. There is one that stands out though because it seems out of place, quite innocuous by comparison to sexual immorality, impure, impurity and uh, greed. And it's foolish talk. What is that doing there? It seems harmless enough. But is it? Twice in Psalms, Psalm 14 verse 1 and uh, 53 verse 1, David wrote, The fool in his heart says there is no God. So then, foolish talk emanates from a place of godlessness. Jesus said in Luke 6, the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So that is also where the rest of the rogues gallery originate. A heart, a godless heart, uh, a place where the light of Christ has not yet penetrated, the dark corners of life where these things fester and grow. And we all, if we're honest, have such dark corners, those cupboards under the stairs where we hide those unsightly things we don't want others to see. 
but we can't hide them from Jesus. The Holy Spirit shines his light on them and shows that whatever those things are, they are empty of worth, empty of value. They are dead things. And Jesus invites us to hand them over to him and to let him fill their space with his light. And instead of sleepwalking into danger, to wake up to all that Jesus has to offer, to experience newness of life. Wake up, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Has there ever been, ever been a uh, more glorious promise? I don't think so. And it's ours. If we step out of our hiding places into God's sunshine. Let's pray. God our Father, Help us to be honest with you, to own up to those things that we've kept in the dark, to reveal them to Jesus' perfect light, that we might be changed evermore from one degree to another into his likeness. Amen. We pray for our church. God our Father, bless, encourage and strengthen the leaders of your church. May our archbishops, bishops and leaders at every level be lighthouse keepers, filled with your Holy Spirit, so that they may guide our nation from the dangers of empty self-centeredness to the fullness of life in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, we often pray for the well-being of our United Kingdom. But at the present time, we pray that our, our nations may be united in love, care and support for our Sovereign Lady the Queen, that she and her family may be aware of the love, even in the midst of her pain and grief. We pray also for all those who govern in her name, that it may be always in the light of Christ that they are guided in their governance for the benefit of all, but especially for those most disadvantaged. Amen. We pray for those in need. O God who heals, we lift before you all who are sick in body, those broken by the cruelty of others, and those for whom the weight of anxiety, stress and depression seems too much to bear. Let's keep a moment of quiet to lift before God those we know. As we lift them before you, Heavenly Father, May the eternal light of Jesus draw their eyes heavenward to find in you healing, strength and peace. Amen. And so we draw our prayers together as we join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's been good to share these few minutes of quiet prayer and reflection with you. And I hope the rest of your day and the rest of your week you will, be, uh, will be blessed by the Lord in all kinds of uh, perhaps unexpected ways. Now... 
the God of peace himself grant you peace at all times and in all ways, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and with all those you love today and always. Amen.